What's going on guys? You're listening to WSOU. I'm Nick and uh, I'm here at the Stone Pony uh, the night before Halloween with uh, my very special guest. I've got Caleb from Beartooth. The guys are coming through for um, their really, really stacked lineup for the aggressive tour. So uh, how, how it's raining outside. It's very, uh, yeah. the setting for tonight is very, very spooky, I guess you could say with the thunder and everything. You pumped for tonight? Yeah, it should be great. It is uh, definitely grim and pretty disgusting outside. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Hopefully that pushes more people inside and we have a really good show. For sure, for sure. And then tomorrow is Halloween, of course. Are you guys doing oh, yeah. anything or We are. We are we have we've started putting together a little a little thing. Um I mean we're all really just kinda of dressing up. We're not doing anything <laughs> fun, but uh, tomorrow in New York City we will be unveiling our Halloween surprise. It should be fun. Okay, okay. Are you guys played on you've had played on Halloween before. Have played you? on Halloween, I've played on Halloween. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But um so this tour is a pretty pretty big deal. It seems like you guys are taking a little bit of an extra step with the set and everything this time around. So what what kind of did you want to do this time that you haven't before? I know you're playing guitar, right, on this mm -hmm. one. So give me a little backstory on what you're trying to do here. Yeah, we just wanted to push the show a little further than we have before. We're playing a ton of new stuff, which is a lot of fun. We have a song where I play guitar, like you mentioned, right. which is definitely a new thing for us. And I don't know. I mean, we we got like some lights out and some. We're just trying to like make the show right more interesting. And you know, we have about an hour and ten minutes every night. To okay. Play and we try and give them everything we got. <laughs> and it's been going pretty well. I'm definitely happy with the tour so far. For sure. And you guys have a lot of good friends out on this tour as well, <laughs> which really brings a lot you know extra to what you guys are doing as well how, what was like your thought process on how you wanted to get this put together um i mean a lot of it is just like bands we like and our friends right uh, we had known fit for a king before and they're a cool band so we asked them if they would do it they were down uh every time i die we just absolutely love that band right and um we toured with them a little bit previously on a warp tour mm -hmm. and yeah, so that worked out and that was amazing. And then Old Wounds is we were just fans of their band, mm -hmm. and again, just hit them up, see if they know <laughs> how to do it, and uh, it all worked out. And I think everybody out here has become good friends, and it's been a really cool tour. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now it's been a while since I've seen you. Last time I saw you is I think Warp Tour, like 2013. So oh, I'm, wow. yeah, so I'm pretty pumped to check you guys out again tonight because back then, obviously. It was a little bit of a, you know, you didn't have as many jams as you do now, so yeah. you're a little more eclectic. Yeah, we got a <laughs> much different set this time around, but For sure. uh, it should be really cool. Yeah, so now, obviously, because of that, you have the new album out, Aggressive. Mm -hmm. It, this has been a little bit of a different album for you because, you know, the last one you had a lot of time to put into. People really didn't know what to expect quite yet. Obviously, there was the EP. But now, there's a lot more expectations of what is kind of expected and what people are kind of looking for. So how was that going into this album, not having necessarily as much time or kind of having a headspace already of this is kind of what we do? Yeah, um, I mean, things are obviously different going into a second album just because, like you were saying, I think the biggest difference was the time thing. Right. Um, I think, you know, the record, the majority of the whole thing was written and engineered in about two months. Okay. Which the first record was written over the course of probably six to eight months, just kind of on right. and off. So uh, that, that made it a little bit different. That made it more of like an intense process for sure right but it worked out good and you know that's just kind of like that's just part of making a second album man, right you gotta really try and bring the heat and it's always an intense process but I for sure it worked out now i know uh, i've heard a lot of things I've, obviously it's been going over well but i've also heard a lot of people critique it at saying that it does sound a lot like the first album was that kind of something that you, you didn't want to stray too far or just kind of like introduce some things here and there? I mean, I just, I didn't want to be one of those bands that you put out a second album that sounds nothing like the first okay. one and just like alienates all these people that enjoyed your first record. Right. And for me, I, this is just kind of the style of music that Beartooth is, man. And I think it would be weird if we like completely went off the rails and exactly. tried to get super crazy with it. I just wanted to write a good Beartooth record and uh, just try and make it better than the first one. Okay. Know? 
That was my goal. Now, I know I'm, it, it's a little interesting that you do all of the writing and recording. Mm -hmm. So what kind of... Now, what does that do for the band? Because obviously with a band, a lot of writing is usually done by one or two people, but then everyone kind of has their little take. How do you think that kind of separates you because it's it's all you? Um, at least for me, it just keeps my head a lot more at ease. Okay. Um, it's much easier for me in a writing setting to just be alone and like just send something right. after it's done and see what people <laughs> think of it. Instead of, uh, like, getting a bunch of people in the room and everybody just kind of, like, going at each other and then, like, you know, everybody trying to, like, fight for this part to work right. this part to work. And, it, it, you know, and I've done it before. And, again, there's nothing wrong with, like, writing like that. I mean, that's majority of bands do that. And right. I think that's totally cool and I respect it. But just the way Bear 2 started was, like, just me kind of alone in my basement doing my thing mm -hmm. and making a record. And um, that's kind of how it, you know, how it ended up and how right. I want to keep it. I, I don't want to, like, just, I think everything, I don't know. I guess the biggest thing I don't want to do is, like, completely change the sound and right. change the stuff people liked about it. I want, that specifically just for this project, that's sure. just kind of me doing my thing, you know. So is that going to always continue, or do you think at some point maybe you'll kind of let, like open it up a little bit and see what everyone else can bring, or is it just like a solely like you like to kind of have this one? Yeah, yeah. that's just how it is. Man. Okay, <laughs> I now think I feel you. Yeah, this is kind of the way we work it. So were there any things that you wanted to try a little bit differently? I know you opened it up with the drums a little bit. From I saw the pictures, obviously everyone knows you guys from the very, very small kit. You opened it up a little bit, yeah. added some toms and some cymbals that looked like. Was that just some playing around you wanted to do for this time? Yeah, I mean, it was just second record. I just wanted to have more fun with the drums. And for me, playing drums is one of my favorite things to do, and I don't get to do it too often. It's right. usually just like <laughs> when it's time to make a record, I sit down for like a while beforehand and get back on the kit and try and get tight again. But um, yeah, man, just wanted to have a little bit of a bigger sound. Bigger right. kid adding to it. Okay. And speaking of drums, you've been playing the last few tours. You've got the new your drummer. You got Connor out here. Mm -hmm. How's that addition been lately? He's great, man. He really brings the live show to a new level. Right. Uh, he's an incredible drummer, and you know he's just rock solid. And whenever you know I gave him the songs, it was like, you know, learn these, and then I wanted because I just enjoyed him as a drummer. When I asked him to you know tour with us right. and play drums on the road. Um, he was down and he brings his kind of like taste to the table and right he hits really really hard and it's <laughs> a lot of fun to play with him so yeah, for sure definitely makes things better you got to play ball with him we were outside <laughs> shooting hoops and he's the champ oh he's got you gotta, it, you yeah. gotta yeah you missed it. <laughs> them and the fit for a king they had a little bit of a horse going on yeah and we, he was killing we it we dropped a little hoops fever at dave and buster's the other day <laughs> but other than that uh i'm not too I'm not too sure what he's got, but I will yeah. find. I was I was surprised. The little short guy going up against. He was playing like Bobby and Jared. There, and, and he had some enormous moves. Enormous people. Yeah, oh, yeah, man, he's got it. it. Climbed like a ladder. Was trying all kinds of crazy stuff. It was <laughs> it was quite the interesting thing to see. That's great. But um, of course, I wanted to ask you because obviously I've been a fan of you for a very very long time. Yeah, I've followed you all the way from when you started out, and it's crazy to see that you've been doing this for so long. What, what do you think is kind of the main thing that you've learned from... Because it's been almost 10 years now. You started like you were around like 15, right? 14, 15? I think it yeah, was. Yeah, I started touring when I was 15 and I joined Attack Attack when I was 14. Right. So how, what would you say is like the, the biggest thing that you learned so far? And kind of like you wish you knew a little bit earlier, but that you know now you're like, okay, this is kind of where I'm at. Uh, touring is all about surrounding yourself with the right people. Okay. And... It, it, yeah, it, that's the biggest thing I've learned is you have to be very careful who you bring on the road because it's such a it's such an intimate setting and you're right. literally living with those people room to room, day to day for months on end. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got to make sure you get along. You got to make sure that they're you know people you trust and that they're good friends. And, right. 
Uh, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing I learned over my years of touring. Okay. And now another interesting thing is because I've seen a lot of people talking about it. I know Austin uh, did an interview not too long ago with, I think it was Loudwire that brought it up too. And uh, I've talked to Johnny Frank a couple of times as well about kind of like with Attack Attack and some things that have gone on with that. I was always curious. I'm sure because of ev all the members and everyone's got their own kind of, you know, thing that's going on. Would there ever be the considerate, this is from a fan point of view, because I'm obviously, I never got to see you guys, right. and I know you guys are all doing your other things, but you guys, your your records are, you know, over 10 years old almost at this point. Mm -hmm. Would there ever be the chance, even just a one-off, to to go back and kind of be like, that was a time in, that we, we wanted to just kind of remember real fast? Or is uh, that something that will never, is kind of done and over? Uh, I, in my opinion, it is toast. All right. I, I am fine beyond over it right and uh, I just want to continue on doing my own right thing. I mean I don't know because I know you, you you played I think it was their last show you came out and yeah. Johnny did too and it was just kind of like a celebration thing yeah that was it man that was it for me that yeah. was farewell and that was starting on the new chapter of life right and I think it ended where it needed to end you know okay and now are you going to be exploring any of your other areas because I know outside of Beartooth you have a lot of other tastes Mm -hmm. that you play around with you know you had your electronic thing for a little while uh, a couple years ago i know you've been doing uh you know i've seen like your little clips you've been doing some 1975 stuff on your instagram here and there <laughs> would there ever be the chance to just kind of explore something else maybe i mean as of right now it was like that's what beartooth was when right. it started it yeah. was just kind of messing around but beartooth kind of took over my life so for it's sure been very very busy with that but um Maybe at some point. It'd okay. Be cool to adventure out again. It right. just depends on the timing. And I'm really happy doing Beartooth full time. Oh, for right sure. Now, yeah. So uh, we're just going to keep that rolling. Yeah. Now, where would you see, like you said, the, the next, you know, you like to kind of keep the sound. But at the same time, you know, after a while, fans kind of like, okay, this is the same thing over and over. Where do you think you're going to go with the next one? What's kind of your thought process? Have you, have you even. Because I know a lot of guys, they start writing um, almost right after the next album. Have you even thought about it yet, or not really? Not really, man. Okay. Uh, it's just been, it's so busy. Like, right. to keep your head on straight, it's hard to go out on the road constantly, and then if you're home, like, you're writing. Like, right. I mean, it's nice to just have time off from everything. For sure. So, um, I don't know. I mean, when I get home, I'm sure I'll get the itch, and I'll start writing a little bit, and, um... Just kind of play it by ear. Right. See what happens. <laughs> I, with Beartooth, I never have like a preconceived, this is what it needs to sound like. I just kind of let it happen. Right. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And uh, you've been doing a lot of producing other than just your stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you kind of want to do more of? I know you did a lot of work. You did the new Bury Tomorrow album, which sounds incredible. And then oh, I caught on to Siler because of you. You did the first yeah, album. Yeah, did their first album. Did, no, you didn't do the... I thought maybe you would stick with them. What kind of was going on there? It you, literally was purely timing. I oh, okay. Be, I would be producing constantly if right. I wasn't so busy with Beartooth. Okay. It honestly has kind of been like something I miss. I mean, Beartooth has completely taken over my life to the point of, well, well at least all my time. So right. it's like... We're either on the road, or we are preparing for some sort of other thing right. we got to do, or I'm writing an album. Right. So, <clears throat> I have not had much time to explore anything else, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a bummer. I wish I could have done the latest side of the record, or at least worked on it in some form or another. I mean, the record's great, yeah. but I just miss working with those guys. And um, Yeah, man, it's all timing. I would, you know, whenever things that inevitably slow down for Bear Tooth a little and we start taking some time off of touring to like, you know, get our own stuff going on. Um, maybe I'll get back into producing more. Okay. But yeah, as of right now, it's just Bear Tooth one time. For sure, for sure. Constantly. And then obviously that's why, you know, Bear Tooth, it, it's so organic for you because you obviously you write and record and you produce everything. So it's pretty cool that you have, you literally can do all of it on your own, which is a pretty incredible thing. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. It's just the way I like to do it. Now, how do you flush out a song? Because I've always, like, I, I like to write, but I can never, obviously, th think everything through. Like, okay, this is what I want. The drums, guitar, the vocals. How, what, what's your thought? How do you get a song going? I don't know, man. It's <laughs> different every time. Sometimes okay. it starts with, like, a drum beat. 
and then I go from there. I guess usually it probably starts with guitar riffs. Okay. And I just kind of build out some riffs, and then uh, it's like a back and forth process. Usually I'll start out with some riffs or like a chord progression. Right. And then I'll start writing some vocals and melodies, and that'll start to like either work with or clash with the other thing and with the guitars, and then I go back and rework guitars and. It's just kind of back and forth till the song all feels like it's glued together. Mm -hmm. okay. That's my process. Now, like you said, this was kind of almost just kind of like something that originally you were just playing around with was just kind of like a fun project to work on. Did you ever have expectations to, to take it as far or was it just kind of something that people kind of told you like, hey, you can really do something with this? It was more of other people. At, you know, originally it was just more for fun and right. for my own thing. And um, then... People, you know, I showed a couple people that I used to work with here and there, and um, they just really believed in it, and I just kind of felt bored at home. You know, I was home for a while, and I felt like I was ready to get back on the road, so okay. uh, just went for the whole thing. Okay. And then uh, another uh, last question I got for you is, you have the song, the new album, Rock is Dead. Mm -hmm. What What's your opinion on what's been going, like, rock in general? <laughs> Because it seems like with a song like that, <laughs> I mean, the song is titled "Rock and Death. Right, obviously, Rock is dead, but yeah. The lyrics is there are, something behind know, the title? Tongue in cheek. Yeah, title. it's it's all polar opposites about how rock and roll is the only thing that I think is like really done something for me and okay. I, that I attach to. And I don't think rock and roll is going anywhere. I think um, it's just evolving, and you know there are a lot of killer rock and roll oh, bands sure. out right now and even still like legendary rock bands that refuse to quit and it's amazing so uh, yeah I mean I don't think rock and roll is going anywhere anytime soon alright cool cool that's all I got yeah, anything you want to add wrapping up I think we covered it man alright cool Sweet. cool man Thank you very much awesome no problem dude